Hey everyone, um, this is the third uh, video for personality, and this basically um, this video is basically focused on um, some theories other than Freudian theory. You know, the first two kind of focused entirely on Freud and his theory. This is focused more on some other perspectives and how they view personality, um, uh, most notably humanistic. Uh, so you'll hear some more about Maslow and Rogers that we already talked about this semester. Um, and then some social cognitive and then trait theories, uh, which will probably make the most sense. They're the pretty much the easiest to kind of understand. But anyway, um, so these are the personality theories that are um, just as well recognized in the psychology community as the Freudian theories um, uh, when it comes to our personality. So, uh, all right. So firstly, the humanistic theories, these are. You know, Freud, Freud was kind of pessimistic overall. He, he basically um, he basically viewed humans as being very negative in their nature, very, um, uh, you know, un, like basically unacceptable. He talked about all the unacceptable, violent, aggressive sexual urges that we had. And Rogers didn't necessarily dismiss those, but he also wasn't as pessimistic. He believed that we weren't necessarily innately bad, but that we were born good and that we could develop into bad people. And that was very common, but that he also believed we were born good and we were born with a kind of a blank slate that was that 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 could be molded into anything mostly positive in his view. But um, <clears throat> so basically he, he believed that we our self-concept was the basis of our personality, whereas Freud believed our experiences and our subconscious and the effect that they had on our thinking was the basis of our personality. Rogers believed that we were all like the basically the, the, the set, uh, as it says there, the set of perceptions and beliefs that we have about our own nature and behavior is the basis of our personality. So if we believe ourselves to be, you know, good people, and and we, you know, the beliefs that we have, whether it's religious, political, whatever, social, I mean, anything, those beliefs and how we view ourselves and, and our set of beliefs. And how how we how those relate to our own nature, that's going to be the, the basis of our personality. He believed that. We can believe ourselves to be anything and we can become that. And if we believe ourselves to be a good person we can become a good person regardless of what's already happened in our lives. Um, basically he looked at it and this isn't very surprising, but he said that, you know, <clears throat> if our self-concept matches, excuse me, <clears throat> voice is going away. Um, if our self-concept matches our life experiences and our, <clears throat> the things that we go through in life, if those match up, in other words, if we believe ourselves to be a good person and we go through and have pretty positive experiences overall in our life, then we're going to have a better we're going to have better mental health and we're going to have a higher self-esteem. Um, he also believed that we want to be the best version of ourselves. So whatever that may be, like whatever our view of ourselves, whatever the view of Whatever the view we have of the best, whatever the best version of ourselves is, we are motivated to, to achieve that. So if we think that we can be a better person than we are currently, then that's going to motivate us to get there, uh, according to Rogers. Um, he also believed that parents have a profound effect on this. Um, he believed that um, parents who were accepting of their children no matter what. Um, even if how their children turn out isn't necessarily how they wanted their children to turn out. But if they create an environment in which those children are free to be who they want to be and not feel like they will have repercussions, then they're going to have a better self-esteem and a better personality and a better view of themselves than others. Um, Maslow was very similar to Rogers in that he shared his positive view on human behavior. And he, sorry, human nature is what I was trying to say there. Sorry. He believed that we were inherently good people. Um, and we already talked a little bit in motivation about his hierarchy of needs. But basically, when it comes to our personality, 
the needs that we have and the and the drive for us to fulfill those needs is going to affect our personality. So if we are constantly trying to achieve higher self-esteem, that means we don't feel like we, we don't have a high self-esteem. So our personality is going to affect be affected by that. Um, basically, uh, you know, Maslow is very similar to Rogers in that we're born good people, but we can change and we're not born bad according like, you know, like Freud seems to suggest. OK, so. If you remember Albert Bandura, we talked about him when we talked about that Bobo the Clown experiment um, back in um, behavior, uh, excuse me, in learning way back the very first week of remote learning. Um, basically, he he came up with what he called the social cognitive uh, view of personality. And in other words, uh, he he came up with this concept called self-efficacy, which was. Um, a combination of how we, um, you know, how we view ourselves, um, the beliefs we have, the attitudes we have, what we're trying to do in any given situation, and the social and environmental cues that we are a part of is going to affect our behavior and our personality. And then how we behave in those scenarios is going to go back and, and change our self efficacy in the future. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I first started teaching, I had a belief that I could be a good teacher. I had a belief that I could get through to kids. Um, I had good intentions. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be better than the terrible teachers I had throughout, you know, at, at certain times in my life. Um, so I had all, but, but I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence at the time when I first started teaching. In other words, my self-efficacy for when, when it came to a classroom um, wasn't very high. However, as I as I continued to be experienced in that, as my beliefs and attitudes morphed and as the as I had more um, experience in those environments and those social constructs, my behavior changed. My outcomes and then my self-efficacy changed as a result of that. And look, self-efficacy efficacy varies depending on the scenarios. Like I feel comfortable in the classroom. I feel comfortable on the baseball field as a coach. I feel comfortable in those environments because I'm around them very, very regularly. I do not feel comfortable talking to a group of people that I don't know. Now, that may sound weird being a teacher, whereas I'm talking to a group of people I don't know every semester at first. But that that's very temporary. It changes like I would not do very good standing up and giving a speech in front of other teachers. That's just not my thing. Um, so my self-efficacy would be very low there, but very high in the classroom. Um, you know, and like that example there, you know, some students have very high self-efficacy in certain classes and very low in others. So. Our, so the reason I bring that up and the reason Bandura brought it up when it came to our personality is that those our self-efficacy is directly correlated to our personality. When we have high self-efficacy, our personality is going to be different than if we have low self-efficacy. Efficacy. Sorry, I just accidentally hit the table there. So if it shook, I apologize. Um, but yeah, that's that's what how, that's how self-efficacy relates back to our personality. So in other words, our social environment experiences etc along with how we look at our social situations and our experiences in social situations directly correlates to our personality and at any given time so that's where that uh that perspective comes in also julian rotter uh came up with this idea of uh locus of control which is how we view the manner in which we approach a problem uh, people may have or, or, or different people have different views on this. In other words, there are some people who always accept responsibility, um, it, it, whether something good or bad happens to them. However, there's also those that have an external locus of control that basically believe that. It's kind of up to chance and kind of out of their control. Um, you know, uh, just. For example, hypothetically speaking, <laughs> if you let's say you apply to like a, a, a college that you 
you know, a couple of years, those of you that, that are underclassmen and you apply to these, these schools and let's say one that you're really hoping to get into, let's say you don't get in. Well, if you have an internal locus of control when it comes to that, you may view it as, OK, well, what did what did I do to not get in? What what could I have done different? Um, in other words, you kind of take respons personal responsibility for what happened. An external locus of control might be someone who's like, well, they had to, you know, quotas were filled, you know, um, uh, you know, basically making excuses that other than maybe they that maybe they could have done something different. Um, and by the way, these can change. Sometimes you may have an internal locus of control in some areas of your life and an external locus of control in others. And, I, and our personalities are related to excuse me, um, are related to those lo those those locuses of control. OK, last last couple of uh, last couple of uh, theories here, the trait when it comes to trait theory. Uh, basically, um, these are uh, the, the trait theories are essentially um, our personalities. Are made up of a bunch of different traits. Um, some traits show up all the time in our personality. Some traits only show up in certain situations. Um, but basically, trait theories are used to kind of show the combo that makes up the majority of your personality. So Gordon Alport uh, was the first to really come up with this this idea. And he basically combined over forty five hundred different adjectives to describe people, um, specific personality traits. And if 40 over forty five hundred sounds ridiculous. It is. Um, and that's why most theories now, most trait theories now have reduced down dramatically when it comes to that. Um, uh, but however, Alport still believed that we had basically three types of traits in our personality, cardinal, central, and secondary. Cardinal traits are the dominant traits that show up pretty much in any situation, no matter what scenario or, um, uh, situation you're in, your personality, your cardinal traits are going to be present no matter what, any, any given situation. Um, central traits are similar to cardinal traits, but they don't necessarily dominate our personality and views and behaviors and all those kind of things. They basically influence us, but they don't dominate. And then secondary are things that are, are traits that are only seen in certain scenarios. So, you know, we all have friends who act very differently in, in certain situations. Like I was told growing up with my friends that I acted very differently in a sports scenario than I did in my school kind of class scenario. Um, my personality was different depending on whether I was playing sports or not. Um, and, and look, if this sounds confusing, it is. It was then. And a lot of Gordon Alport's theory, people just kind of pick and choose from it nowadays. It's not extremely well used and, and uh you don't really hear much about it uh, other than in you know classes like this. So um, and then this is if you're talking about trait theories, this is the one that you tend to see a lot of. It's called the big five or the five factor model. Um, and it basically said you basically you take a, 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 a excuse me, a um, test or personality inventory that shows you how high you are on these five traits. And that describes your personality. And you can the easy way to remember it is there's two acronyms, canoe or ocean, whichever, you know, whichever one is better for you to remember. Um, and the five traits are neuroticism, openness, extroversion, conscientiousness and agreeableness. Um, and uh, I'm going to go through what each one of those is in just a minute. But um, basically, these this theory kind of takes a bunch of different types of personality traits and just kind of puts five groupings together and shows you how high you score on those groupings. So openness is like how open you are to new experiences and being spontaneous and, um, you know, uh, you, you're, uh, you're comfortable getting maybe outside of your norm. Um, you know, you're intellectually curious, open to experience those kind of things. If you're low on the scale, you, May be you may prefer to be kind of around what's the norm, what's normal to you, and you kind of think the way you always have thought. You don't necessarily change your your mind on a lot of things. Um, conscientiousness is you know how you know you're, the higher you are on that, the more self disciplined 
the more organized and motivated you are and low, maybe you're a little more careless, impulsive, those kind of things. Um, extroversion is how outgoing you are, really, how sociable you are. The higher you are on that, the more extroverted you are. That's where the kind of an easy one to remember. Um, and then the low scores, you'd be kind of more introverted, more reserved, more quiet. Um, agreeableness. Uh, the higher you are on that scale, the more trusting you are and cooperative with others. How low low you are, you're maybe a little more, I don't want to say paranoid, but maybe you're a little more suspicious of people, maybe a little less trusting. Um, and then neuroticism, the higher you are on that, the more anxious and stressed you are. Lower scores tend to be a little more calm, easygoing and laid back. OK, um, so that was pretty short, pretty quick. Those are some uh, those are some. Uh, uh, theories other than Freudian theory. And um, the last video for this week is going to focus on how we measure personalities and maybe ways that we do like personality tests and things like that. So I'll see you guys then.